Alright, in this example I am actually going to be uh, doing the balloon one. This is going to be kind of long so i got to speed this one up. I'm going to create a soccer ball because when I smooth it, it is going to be more uniform than uh, using a uh, sphere. It's going to be uh, all quads and it's going to be a little bit more uniform than actually using a box. So I want to move that up a little bit. Come up here, freeze the transforms, make it smooth, delete the history. We go to the end cloth, make it an end cloth on the front view, make the top section terrible. And I'm also going to come over here. There we go, select dynamic. I want to make the glue strength one. The reason being is when I start deflating and inflating it, I don't want it to tear. So that's only going to be temporary. In addition, I want to make the ground or uh, the grid the ground plane, so nucleus, ground plane, use plane. Bump this up to a thousand. So now when I push uh, play. I move down, hit the ground plane, and look like that. But I want to deflate. So with that being said, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to the pressure properties, which is right here, between wind field and quality. And this is what you're looking at. Um, when you push one, it's going to put pressure into it, so it's going to bulge out, as you can see right here. So with that being said, if I go to negative one, it's going to suck in. So that looks good. Now I need to make this into the start geometry. So you want to select that, go to the end, uh, end dynamics, go to end solver, initial site, set from current, much like the uh, hair tutorial. Set from current. So now when I push play at the beginning, it starts off with that geometry. So now we're going to do some basic animation. I'm going to uh, right click the pressure, set key, push play a little bit about there, put the pressure to 1, so there's uh, pressure going to be put into it, and right click set key. Start from the beginning, and now when I push play, it's going to start putting pressure into the, uh, into the ball, like so. But I, now I need to make the gravity. So well, with that being said, click on that, fields, gravity, and this is what I'm going to be dealing with right here. Just play a little bit, let it play a little bit. Right click, set key. Let it play a little bit more. Right about there. Then I want to make the gravity one. Right click it, set key. So now when I push play, not only is it going to start putting pressure in here, the gravity is going to start gradually going to one, so it's going to lift off in the air. So now that I got that taken care of, next I'm going to create the spike. So I'm going to go polygons, spike right here, flip it around, move it up, freeze the transforms, smooth it, and delete the history. End cloth, make it a rigid object. So now when I push play, I should probably move that up a little bit more. Yeah. Move it up a little bit more. Try that again, this time with feeling. Push up a little bit more. Now it's going to go up and it's going to start pushing it down. So now, all I got to do is go to the dynamic section right here and turn the glue strength, which eludes me, there it is, back to 0.1. So when I push play, it's going to hit there, smack right into it. And if you look closely, you can see that it actually did puncture right there. Now here's something that uh, you may not, well you probably did notice, but when I keep pushing play, the pressure is still at 1, it's still going to go up. That means you need to animate the uh, animate the uh, pressure and the gravity to go back. So there's where it punctures, so that's when you want to turn everything back. But that's basically how I did the, uh, the balloon and the soccer ball, so yeah. Alright, now we're going to start on the float. As it says, uh, due to the time it took me to create this and the very slow playback for uh, testing, uh, this is going to be played at 225 and this uh, voiceover is recorded after everything. Uh, this is a model I created a while ago, low poly teddy bear. Uh, first thing I did was I smoothed it and then I converted it to an end cloth 
and then I use the ground plane as the uh, or use the plane as a ground plane so when I start deflating it and it starts to collapse it's going to actually hit on the ground instead of uh, it just falling. Uh, the goal, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to uh, create a flat well, I'm just really kind of uh, trying to deflate it so when I start inflating it it'll look pretty neat. But uh, the principle for this is actually very similar to the soccer ball in the previous uh, example. But you can kind of see that if this is at 225%, how slow it was at 100%, uh, and how much slower it would have been if I was actually recording this at real time. Right now, I'm just kind of tweaking some uh, variables. Now I'm going to create some anchors uh, for the float with uh, planes, putting them in the corner. Uh, now I'm uh, making the anchors go on all four sides. So I have four anchors. Thinking about it afterwards, I would have had a, I should have made a fifth one for the head, but I'm just going to use it for four limbs in this example. Um, on all four of them, I created them to an end cloth. I am selecting the very edges. I'm using um, transform constraints so the edges don't move. Then I'm going to be using a uh, component to component constraint from the tips of the, uh, I'll say, ropes to uh, the limbs on the teddy bear. Do this on all four of them, one for each limb. Now that I have all the constraints, um, I'm actually going to. Uh, I actually switched all the uh, rest length methods to constant, so uh, the rope will actually snap to the constraints. Uh, it is de by default set to from current or something like that. And as you saw, when it deflated, it lifted up. And it's really stretchy, so I'm uh, re increasing the stretch resistance to hopefully uh, make the rope and the float a little bit more, uh, well, less stretchy, more or less. As you can see, as it starts lifting up in the air and inflating, it's starting to deform at the face, so I have to increase the uh, pressure and uh, the stretch resistance. I was thinking about doing rigidness, but uh, if it goes from the initial state, it's going to probably collapse it on itself, so I have to keep that at zero. Alright, I just increase the pressure up a little bit more so I can uh, pop the nose out instead of it just be, uh, staying folded on itself. Thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, you gained something from my series of videos. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything miscellaneous, or even any requests, like um, if you want to learn how, if you want to know how to do something, want me to do it for you, just let me know. I'll see what I can do. Thank you very much, and have fun.